Silverwood might be America's most remote theme park, but it is one that I would recommend to anyone. They're located about an hour away from Spokane, Washington in Athol, Idaho. So if you're planning a visit, you're about an hour away from the Spokane Airport, north of Coeur d'Alene and south of Sandpoint. If you kept going another hour, you'd hit Canada. So yeah, it's a bit out there, but what a gem this place is. The best comparison I would make to this is a Hershend Park like Dollywood or Silver Dollar City, which makes a lot of sense when you think about that Hershend actually tried to acquire Silverwood and they said no. Silverwood is privately owned. It's run by the Norton family. Gary Norton is the owner. He founded the place. It's run by his son, Paul. His brother, Nick, is the magician there at a must-see magic show. So the place is extremely well taken care of. Like this is the definition of a place that receives a lot of love because of how dedicated the owners are to it. There's so much charm and personality here. We have a lot to talk about, so let's do a basic breakdown here. Silverwood is a very long and narrow layout. Most of the park is made up from the theme park, but you also have a water park. When you enter, you go left to the main theme park, or you can go right to their water park, Boulder Beach. And Boulder Beach is actually pretty nice too. I haven't had the opportunity to experience any of the slides, but I have done a walk around from the area, and I think it'd be very easy to spend a lot of time there. Their slide collection is awesome, and they have some great landscaping. But this is a very long and narrow layout. If you're in Boulder Beach and wanted to walk to Aftershock, you're going to be walking for a while. So it's not a traditional layout. Once you get to the back half, it's kind of like a circle, but it dead ends over by Aftershock. So I wouldn't say it's a perfect layout, but if you're a thrill seeker, they've packed in their biggest roller coasters pretty much all right next to each other. Stunt Pilot is right next to Tremors, which is right next to Timber Terror, which is right next to Aftershock. They call that section Roller Coaster Alley. They have a really cool sign there to kind of show you that you've entered that section of the park. They do have a nice kids area though. There's a total of six roller coasters here, two of which are children's attractions. This includes an SBF Visa and a small powered coaster called Tiny Toot. So bottom line is there is plenty to do here. And outside of the roller coasters, some of their top attractions include Spin Cycle. This is a very eye-catching attraction. It always has one of the longest lines in the park. Unlike several other Frisbees, Spin Cycle goes completely upside down. So there's a lot of hang time. The whole thing feels very controlled. You almost like stall at the top a little. So I won't say the attractions for everyone, but you can understand why this is a big draw here. They also have a Larson drop tower called Panic Plunge. These things are great. Gives an awesome view of the park. But in general, Silverwood is a lot more than just rides. This is just a fun place to walk around. You don't even have to ride anything. It's very lively. It's also very pretty. I've spent a lot of time here and I never get bored of this place. I think you could easily spend two days here, especially if you're planning on doing the water park. Now I want to talk about food here a little bit because everything is actually reasonably priced. That's one thing I was immediately impressed with about Silverwood. Most amusement parks, you're paying like, let's say four bucks for a soda. Here, it's 250. That's pretty standard for like places outside of theme parks. And all of the portion sizes are huge. Like it'll fill you up. There's a great Mexican place over by Timber Terror and Aftershock. You're gonna be absolutely stuffed if you eat there. There's also a barbecue place up front, a very charming saloon near the front entrance. And if you're coming to Silverwood, an absolute must is to try the Huckleberry anything. They have Huckleberry ice cream. And just a word of warning, if you get this, it'll say one scoop, but one scoop isn't actually one scoop. One scoop is like five scoops. So if you get a standard ice cream cone, you probably won't be able to finish it. Like you could easily share it between a couple different people. I also highly recommend the Huckleberry milkshakes. You can find this over by Panic Plunge. These things are spectacular. I highly recommend. If you see the Nick Norton magic show, which he is so incredibly talented, absolutely something you should make time for. But it's like a dinner theater. You can order a full pizza and sit down and watch it. I won't say it's like the best pizza in the world or anything, but I appreciate that everything's really good value for your money. Now, while we're talking about must do's, one thing I suggest making time for, and I only actually got to do this for my first time during my most recent visit, but that's the park's train. And this is crazy. I didn't realize how long of an experience this is because this train takes you way back there, like so far outside of the park. There's theming, the train stops and there's a show. And at one point we passed real Buffalo, like just casually. You're out in the woods of the Pacific Northwest and there's just buffalo walking around. It was insane. So I think you can understand that there's a lot of hidden gems here. Now it doesn't mean that the park is perfect. One thing you definitely got to be aware of is they only have one train for most of their big attractions. Stunt Pilot is the only roller coaster here that even has a second train. So that means lines can get long for Tremors and Timber Terror and Aftershock. That's if you can get on Aftershock. This ride is pretty finicky. It only operates if it's above 65 degrees, which is something I genuinely don't understand.
band, but the ride is always having technical issues. So if you're able to get on it, consider yourself lucky. And this is an awesome ride too. It's a shame whenever it's down. So I think the bottom line is if you're at Silverwood and you see Aftershock going, run for it. Another thing I'd love to see Silverwood improve in the future is it feels like one side of the park is a little off balance. Like they have one side weighted with all of their big attractions. And then as you're coming around this other side, there's not a whole lot there. Like that's where the entrance to their Rapids ride, which is cool. But they have the land where they could definitely fit some more attractions if they want to. So they absolutely have room to grow. But I often find myself staying in one section of the park more so than others. So I think it'd be cool if they were able to kind of spread the love a little bit. So I think to kind of wrap things up here, Silverwood is a really awesome park. I first visited several years ago. I actually went for the first time during the their Halloween event Scarywood, which was actually pretty awesome. They don't operate Aftershock during it, but they cycle Timber Terror backwards and they have some really good haunted houses. And just seeing Silverwood at night covered in fog was a really cool experience, but I've been able to come back several times since then. And I always have a great time here. The park has so much personality. Nothing about this place is conventional. Even when you're driving up to it, you have to park on the other side of the street and walk through a tunnel that goes underneath the highway. The area where the park sits used to be an airport. There's literally a strip of land where there used to be a runway and they do air shows here. That's where the theme from Stunt Pilot comes from, paying tribute to Silverwood's past. Silverwood is home to the first ever modern looping coaster with Corkscrew. That originally opened at Knott's Berry Farm and then when they were ready for something new, they sent it up here. And on top of all that, if you're a roller coaster fan, this is basically the RMC Park. Its founder, Fred Grubb, got his start at Silverwood just doing maintenance. And so the gift shop that Tremors flies through, that was designed by Fred. He built Timber Tear and Tremors. He's the reason they have Aftershock. He built Boulder Beach. Gary asked my dad during that time, he says, do you think you can build a coaster? And Fred says, well, I think so. Yeah, let's give it a try. wanted a big out and back coaster that would make the park look three times bigger than it was and be right on the highway. That's why it was so cool when they added Stunt Pilot because they are finally putting in one of their own rides. And this is actually something that you can learn more about in This Is How We Roll, which is a feature length documentary that we made about Rocky Mountain construction. And Silverwood plays a huge role in it. Some of the footage that you've seen in this video was shot specifically for that documentary. And the park was so great to work with for that project, which is part of the reason why I think I love this place so much. But I also just think it has such a unique history. The link to where you can check out this documentary is in the description below. I definitely encourage you to check it out. It gives you so much appreciation for not only Silverwood, but also Rocky Mountain Construction and all of their roller coasters and that impact that they've had on the amusement industry. But I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. If you've been to Silverwood, what do you think of it? Do you agree with the points I've made? Do you think there's anything I missed? Let me know down below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and we'll see you next time.